Reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things. Lands formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more that will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong people will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will flee. For you have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the vain storm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was still. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well matured wines, of rich food filled with manna, of well matured wines straight here. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. 
Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. All the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the wisdom that guides us, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We do not live by bread alone, but by every bread that comes from the mouth of God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Amen. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. Praise I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, at the start of this Black History Month, hear the words of that great American preacher, Martin Luther King. He said this, if we are to have peace on earth, our loyalties must become ecumenical rather than sexual. Our loyalties must transcend our race, our tribe, our class, and our nation. And this means we must develop a world perspective. But what a great quote, particularly this week as we start to explore um, other religious traditions and our exploring faith force. The question is, why is this important? Well, as a national church, we have a long history in which we have persecuted those, not just from other religions, but for those who were sort of different sorts of Christians to we are. And the ecumenical journey over the last 100 years has brought churches together in the most remarkable way, and that's something to, to rejoice about. The next journey is one where we recognize and listen to and learn from other religious traditions. And it seems that the church is beginning to recognize that there are constant themes, truths, recurrences in all of the great world religions. This moves us beyond tribal identity markers because quite simply if it's true it's true everywhere 
that should make us rejoice rather than become defensive or aggressive. In discerning truth, our first question should not be who said it? Was he Anglican, the Baptist, or Hindu? That should be of little concern. Of greater importance is is it true? An important question to ask in this interfaith journey is how we can learn to draw from the deep common source of love from all religious traditions without denying the goodness of our own Christian tradition. Perhaps some Christians feel nervous because it could be perceived as diminishing or denying our Christian faith. But that needn't be so. There's something about it being a marriage by diversity along with unity. Interestingly, the mystics of all religions, they reject the outer forms, the symbols and metaphors, things like creeds and church buildings and the Eucharist. Rather, they insist on finding the inner meaning, the depth, the universality of their own spiritual tradition. And this requires a grown-up faith, a mature faith to recognize that all religious language is by necessity metaphorical, that God is ineffable, a mystery that can't be captured in words. Yet once we tap into the deeper stream of our own religion, we will recognize its divine source everywhere. We cannot see this as long as we remain floating on the surface or looking at mere externals. Here we can only see differences. Now this approach doesn't mean ignoring differences, nor does it mean that it doesn't matter what you believe. It involves being rooted in one's tradition, being an unembarrassed Christian, but with an open heart and mind and a generosity of spirit to learn. And once we discover our deep source, we realise that it's not a competition. We don't need to put anyone down, prove them wrong, or exclude them from the great banquet. Our first speaker for this course, which starts this week on Tuesday, is a rabbi. And it's worth reminding ourselves that two thirds of the Bible that we read is comprised of the Hebrew scriptures. Scripture gathers together the slowly unfolding cumulative visions of the divine. And Jesus, we need to remind ourselves, was a Jew, a rabbi. One of the things that shot Jesus' Jewish compatriots, or some of them anyway, is that he befriended and affirmed the outsiders, the Samaritans, the Roman citizens, the pagans, Syrophoenicians. And the roots of that openness can actually be found in the Hebrew scriptures itself. Today's Hebrew reading describes this wonderful banquet with rich food and well-matured wines. And for whom is this anchor for? Well, verse 6 tells us that it's for all people. There's a universality at the heart of Isaiah's poem. This is quite different to the character we sometimes have of the Old Testament God as harsh, intolerant, angry, genocidal, and, in contrast, the New Testament God as good, compassionate, and loving. This caricature is remarkably persistent today, but it's far too simplistic, as we discover from today's reading. Here, Isaiah promises that God will destroy the shroud of death that is cast over all nations, and that God will swallow up death forever, and that the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. 
The wedding feast in today's gospel is rather more complicated, particularly with its brutal ending. It's also been interpreted by many Christians in a profoundly anti-Semitic way. The wedding feast is the Messianic banquet and the A-list guests who refuse to attend the wedding of God's chosen people, the Israelites. And the B-listers, the last minute guests who come off from the streets and fill the banquet hall are the Gentiles. I think we need to reject such an anti-Semitic reading. I preached on this passage previously, so I don't want to spend lots of time on it today. Go and read my sermon of another time. Uh, which challenges, which, which looks at some ways really difficult, especially that ending. The point I think this parable is making is that God's invitation to the banquet of his son is flung open to all. It's not just for the elites, although they are welcome too. It's for those whom society deem be outside the possibility of God's love, they also are invited. The wedding feast is a theme that pops up in the Gospels a number of times. It was Jesus' metaphor for final and loving union. We are all invited to the great heavenly banquet where we are all brothers and sisters. This is not just wishful thinking. We are promised that it's the theological and ontological shape of reality. Just as we have come from God, so we will all return to God. Union with the divine has been the heartbeat within the mystical strands of all the great world religions. And we don't have to wait for it until our earthly life ends. It can begin here and now as we open our hearts and lives to live in the love of God and are drawn ever closer into the divine likeness and into the eternal grace of God. Remember of God your holy church throughout all the world. Bless your people and make an end to all error and division among us. Give us grace along with those of other faiths to see the fullness of your being. Lord, in your mercy. Remember all those whom you have sent over your household, the stewards of your mysteries and shepherds of your people. May they faithfully fulfill the ministry entrusted to them and renew your people through the holiness of their lives and the generosity of their service. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
inspire the leaders of the nations, that they may exercise their authority as servants of your justice and mercy. Grant that through them peace and freedom may be established throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. you are the physician of our souls and bodies, making us whole. Lift up and strengthen the sick, and deliver them from their suffering. And amongst those who have asked for our prayers, are Harold Carter, Shannon Miller, Amber Sinclair, Maria Cariotti, Pat Turner, Ray Andre, and Vanessa Green. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. And to succor all in anguish and oppression, feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, sustain the needy. And particularly on this safeguarding Sunday, all those who are abused or misused, give us grace to see our faults and time for amendment to come. Bring release to all who are justly imprisoned, and give new courage to the weak and the exploited. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. remember in your kingdom all who have died, and also recently departed for Sabina Janssen's and Jean Wood, and those here whose years mind falls at this time, for Eleanor Norman Mudler. Jesse Taylor, Joe Smith, Winifred Haskell, Duncan Louis Stewart, Anna Velvet, John Vance, and Jean Tranchett. Grant that in your light they may see light. Lord, in your mercy. Bless us in our life and prayer together in this place that we may be made in your love, and our joy may be full. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And so we pray together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, it is customary at this time in pre COVID environment that we take a pledge, and if it was your custom to uh, leave a donation in an envelope, please feel free to take an envelope um, at the end of the queue and do so when you need to fill it today. Jesus said, Love one another as I have loved you. So you are to love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We offer one another a concert of silence. Thank you. 
on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Our Lady, St. George, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth and as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, be the way of the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us. With the giving and receiving of Holy Communion, I receive the wine for all of us. And if I can ask you at the appropriate time to come forward in single file to receive the bread and then to return to your pews along the side aisles. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Only save God. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you.
Let us pray. We praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast. For here we receive you, here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace, and here a pledge of future glory is given. When we shall feast at that table where you reign, with all your saints forever, Amen. We say together, Almighty God, 
we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out into the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Uh, please sit for our notices. Um, there's a number of quite short notices today. Uh, just next uh, Sunday, uh, we have um, a very special preacher coming, uh, Paula Gooder, to uh, St. John the Baptist to celebrate the feast for St. Luke. Um, so that's next Sunday, details in um, our, uh, the back of the service sheet. Um, the annual parochial church meeting of St. John's takes place on Zoom tomorrow um, at 7.30, isn't it, James? I think, yes. So that, if you would like to join that by Zoom, please do so. Um, Thursday evening, a very important event is taking place here, again um, at 7 p.m., to celebrate and give thanks for the ministry of our wonderful organist, who, of course, is hidden behind the flowers um, in his usual quiet manner um, out of the limelight. But this is an opportunity for us to give thanks for the wonderful work uh, that Andrew has given us. 25 years, uh, so silver jubilee, isn't it? Yeah. So, so do please come to that, tickets through Eventbrite. Uh, looking ahead, All Souls um, service at St. John's on the 1st of November. I hardly need mention the Exploring Faith uh, seminars that have been done, except to say that they start at 7.30. For this week only. And when, when, do, when do they, at 7 o'clock? Yeah, sorry. Uh, so... This, this week we have uh, Rabbi Jonathan Wittenberg. Uh, he can only join us at 7.20, so do join us with Zoom uh, at that time. The others, there's, there's um, a Buddhist and a Muslim speaker at uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, the only requirements are open hearts and open minds to explore. Is there anything else, James? No, except to say, do please stay at the end of end of the service. So please stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.